Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel, Power Addiction. It's been a little while. I got uh, something that I'm changing out on my F-150 today. It's going to be, I'm putting the 18 GT manifold in. So right now, I'm doing a little draggy um, comparison. I know that the DA might be different in a couple hours when I'm done with the uh, manifold, but I'm going to try to get like a 30 to 70 pool because I, I can't even do a zero to 60 or any of that because my tires spin the shit off of this thing um anyways um right now i'm gonna be going and doing a uh, 30 to 70 pool and we're gonna compare a 30 to 70 pool from the truck manifold and the gt manifold and then i will do a um you'll see on the draggy like the speed acceleration and all that and then i'm gonna try to do a video of my dash and see if I can get something on there that um, you can see. So anyways, um, watch this. GT to 18 GT manifold. All right, so let's get started on this. Um, gotta pop the hood, disconnect the fuel, pull the fuel rails, pull the <clears throat> manifold. Hopefully everything goes smooth. But I'm gonna set this camera up so that you can kind of see what I got going on, and uh, hopefully get this done soon. So the first thing I'm going to take off is the factory intake over here. Um, that shouldn't take long, well, a couple minutes. Got to take the throttle body off too, so I'm going to leave that for now and then get the intake out of the way. Alright, so first thing first, we're going to pop these clips. We're going to lift this up. Make sure that's loose. <clears throat> Take that bolt out. That is a 932, 932nd, whatever you want to call it. We have to disconnect this hose. We have to disconnect this piece from the manifold. I mean, from the intake. So you just push this black thing in, black, I guess it's a button, whatever you want to call it, and it spreads the pieces inside open, and then you just pop it off. We have a coolant hose right here that's kind of in the way, but not really. So we're going to disconnect that there. Pop this off. Here. And then we're going to try to work that out. Oh, there's another one down here that we have to disconnect. Take a little plastic piece on the bottom, you pull out and then separate. Set this on here so it's out of the way. This should slide right out now. Set it to the side. So on these clips, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little, uh, like a little grabber piece that you pull out and then it just loosens and pops off this one has the black button on the top here push it in they're all quick releases um, now we are going to take off the fuel rails so we need to pull the covers off so remove that on the other side there's the same thing it's pretty easy put these to the side supposed to release pressure on your fuel rail beforehand so I mean 
there's ways you can do it. We're gonna pull the fuel pump fuse. And number 50 is a 30 amp fuse is your fuel pump. Well, we're gonna we're gonna just turn the key over and let it fucking stall, basically. Run that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it worked, but I um, pulled the, the fuel pump fuse and I cranked the truck over. You can hear it, what I did, but it didn't actually start, so I'm not sure it lost pressure or whatever. Um, anyways, now I'm about to disconnect the battery. Red terminal, obviously. And now... We're gonna disconnect all these backing lines from the from the truck. So push button here. Oh, get my finger under there. Oh, yeah, I probably should have just disconnected the fuel rail switch, but backing line disconnected. Backing line disconnected. Why they don't do all these fucking connections the same? All disconnected. Now we're gonna disconnect the fuel rail. Joking. The fuel rail bolts are ten millimeter. Slide the lock. Let's get this green hose off first. Then I can give it a the wire a little pull. I'm gonna disconnect the brake booster. Just Disconnect all of your injector plugs. Ah, son of a bitch. Some of them are kind of... This one's a little pain to get to here. My hands are too damn big sometimes.
high pressure fuel pump. I gotta disconnect this. That one. Got that one. Now we just gotta lift this up. Oh, I forgot to unplug the sensor. Oh no, it's a clip lock. There we go. Now the fuel rails and injectors can come out. Put these safe so no one kids, I got kids. They can walk by and crack your injectors off. Don't, don't let them do that. All right, so now here comes the hardest part. Taking the bolts out and lifting it out. People always ask me how I know how to work on cars and all that stuff. and Because uh, that's not, I'm not a mechanic at, by trade. And... I had a stepfather when I was a kid that um, he was a mechanic and I used to go out and work with him on the car and stuff. My kids are um, a little too young. They kind of get in the way a little bit and um, like to play with parts and tools and stuff. So one's going to be three and one's going to be six, but the six year old's getting close um, to being able to come out and I can teach him how to work on stuff. But I was like... I was probably like between six and eight when I started working with my stepfather on cars. He would take me to the shop sometimes. And uh, always a mechanic's car is a piece of shit. That's what they say. But um, yeah, we had a piece of shit car growing up. And he did his best to keep it in working shape. And I used to have to go out and help him quite often. Held down by a zip tie. I don't know if the zip tie goes through. Nope, it pops off. It should pop off. There, pop that one off. Pop that off. Now that's out of the way. This can go right up over the top, but I gotta get this little fucking clip off. off the throttle body. The throttle body is an 8 millimeter. This might make it easier to work with, so I'm just going to take it off. Get this out of the way. I don't want to break anything anyways, so we're going to shit around. I'm trying to get to them damn wires in the back is almost impossible, but it made that shit happen because we yanked the cook. Working on my truck. Oh, your rake truck. Yeah, my rake truck. Oh, getting these plugs off is probably going to take fucking three years in a day. I'm going to be angry with that motherfucker. The last thing I got to do is get the wiring off the back. It's a bitch. If I run into anything special, I'll let you know. That's the hardest part of the job. <laughs> Alright, now 
Now this should just lift right out, but I'm kind of in an awkward position, so I am going to try to leverage this, but I'm standing on a bucket and it's not easy. All right, so here's the difference. You can see the truck manifold is much higher than the GT manifold. And what I was having a problem with getting undone was back here, this plug, the map sensor down here, that was a bitch. Then all these plugs, there's like the connectors that hold the wiring to it to keep it in place. Man. I don't even want to talk about that. But those were a pain because my hands, I can't get back there. Like beefy hands or whatever. Anyways, um, so these I couldn't get to to reach back and like pop them off. And I don't have like a, a puller, so whatever. I don't even want to hear about it because you couldn't get one back there. I mean, maybe you could, but not with my hand. Anyways, um, so now I have to switch a couple of these over to the... Um, the truck actually I don't know if I'm gonna be able to hook some of them up I don't know what people have done because that piece is looks like is part of yeah so that's it whatever anyways those are gonna have to hang I guess gotta change the map sensor over here and we good to go so let's do that real quick Eight millimeter. All right, so today's a different day. I actually lost my camera yesterday. Um, I stopped it because I was trying to get the plugs in the back and I kept knocking the camera down. And then once I put everything back together, so everything goes back in reverse. So it's pretty simple. I mean, you don't really need to see that. The hardest part was getting like the the map sensor off the back, and like there was a couple of plugs in the back, and then the uh, the snap in secure the like the zip tie with the snap in piece that secures to the back the wires to the back of the uh, manifold. Those um, are a pain in the ass because you can't get your hand back there um, to grab them and just yank them off. But um, and a tool like yeah, you might be able to get a tool back there, but I doubt it. Like I tried to use something to prime off but I, I just couldn't get nothing back there anyways so where I found my um my camera is funny because I put everything back together couldn't find my camera to, to like do you know an update and then I took the truck for a ride came back and then like a couple hours later I'm like let me check somewhere and this is where I found my camera right in this area right here down in there under the hood the new Mustang intake manifold, the 18 GT. It actually all snaps back together. It sits down way lower than the other one, maybe like an inch and a half or so. It, it actually makes a, a big difference look-wise um, under there. And I'm assuming you could put the uh, the, the uh, covers on, the intake uh, manifold covers, like the engine dressing, because it has this, the connectors, but I haven't bought one or tried that. Anyways so yeah it's back together this right here is kind of it's kind of flattened a little bit it's i'm sure it has a little bit of um a little bit of restriction but nothing crazy that's for the pcv valve what else nothing so everything went back together and we're good put the tune on and we'll talk about that now So what are, what are my thoughts on the uh, GT manifold? Um, honestly, I like it. I'm getting used to it a little bit. I've been playing today. Um, it is very smooth. It feels very smooth. Maybe it's just my imagination, but it literally feels like 
like like everything feels just super smooth. The intake manifold is is great. High RPMs. I didn't used to get um I didn't used to get my my tires didn't chirp when I was doing 70 and and would floor it and it would shift gears. Um, now at wide open throttle it shifts around somewhere around 70 and my wheels actually chirp. So the the higher end is is uh, definitely I got more power. It probably won't kill your 60 foot. It probably won't kill my 60 foot either because I just spin the tires. But I like it. I had to get used to it, and I feel like maybe if you uh, if you change it out and you feel like I did when I first got in it and started driving, just drive. I, my wife has an MX5 um, or a CX5, not an MX5, a CX5. Um, get in that go drive that around for about 30 minutes and then uh go back and drive drive your truck and you'll you'll be happy so i like after driving it a bunch i can't tell the difference too much anymore um maybe i'm just getting used to this but it really when i say smooth i mean it's like super smooth my engine seems a little quieter too and i don't have that tin can uh noise that i was getting before maybe the tune hasn't adjusted um the cam phasers and stuff uh, out yet or whatever but we'll see in a couple days it's possible it comes back anyways like subscribe comment share anyways enjoy have a good one we out